Welcome to the Undergraduate Chemistry Program at the University of Arizona. In the next 20 minutes or so, I'm going to introduce you to many aspects of our program. First, let's take a look at the building that you'll be spending a lot of time in. It was during the administration of U of A President Henry Koffler that a building dedicated to housing undergraduate science courses was conceived and built. It seemed only fitting that when a time came to name a building for President Koffler, this one was chosen. Vertically, the building is divided into two towers, north and south. On each floor, each tower contains a quad, which is made up of four laboratories and one prep room. So each floor has two quads, one in the north tower and one in the south tower. Which quad are you in? The top three floors of this building house our lab rooms. On the second floor, you'll find lecture halls and the teaching support office, room 201. The TSO is responsible for our large multi-section courses. They handle administrative issues, including registration, and can answer any questions that you might have regarding your chemistry courses. Your TA reports to a supervisor in the TSO. You should consider it your first source of help when you have a problem. A good source of academic help is the general chemistry tutor room, Koffler 202. TAs are available to help you with lecture and lab problems. This is a good place to get help with your lab reports. A schedule is posted across from the TSO. A good source of academic help is the Organic Chemistry Tutor Room, Koffler 212. TAs are available to help you with lecture and lab problems. This is a good place to get help with your lab reports. A schedule is posted across from the TSO. You can also get a private tutoring list from the TSO. There are lots of people on this list who will tutor you one-on-one -on -one in just about any chemistry course. However, there is a fee for this service, but group rates are available. Okay. Let's go see the modern lab you will get to work in. One great thing about the labs is the separate lecture area where you can discuss with your classmates and your instructor about the day's experiments before performing them. The area over here is the official lab area and there is a line on the floor to separate the two areas. Here is where safety policy comes into play. If you do the experiments according to the instructions, they are safe, however, Misinterpretation or using the wrong chemicals can result in a serious accident. So we put lots of notes in your lab manual to remind you of when you should be extra careful. Also, your instructor will tell you about precautions that you should take before the experiment. Still, it is impossible to point out all of the dangerous things that could happen. Not only do you have to worry about what you do, you have to worry about what the person next to you does. So we've established safety rules to minimize the problems from the unexpected. Some of them are common sense, but some of them are not. For instance, remember the line on the floor? On this side of the line, safety materials are required. This includes splash-proof goggles, remember, splash-proof goggles, not glasses, and a lab coat, and closed-toed shoes. Also, occasionally gloves will be required for an experiment so make sure you have them with you when they are required. Dress comfortably. Shorts and tank tops are okay with a lab coat, but remember, the more of your skin that you cover, the safer you'll be. Remember, on this side of the line, safety equipment is required. On this side, you can take it off. Goggles on, goggles off. Goggles on, goggles off. Okay. Let's look at the lab area. We can safely have up to 24 people working in this area. That's about all one TA can keep track of. By the way, everyone will get their own locker or will share with one other student. Almost everything you need for your experiment is in here, and the rest of what you need is either in the lab, like ring stands, test tube holders, hot plates, and Bunsen burners, and some other equipment is available to check out from the prep room. This is the prep room. The people that work here are here to help you. As you can see, one prep room serves four labs, so be patient with them. Back to safety stuff. There are lots of things in the room to help keep you safe. Should you spill any chemical on your skin, go to the sink, wash the area for 15 minutes, and make sure your TA knows what's going on. Another thing to remember is to only use water. Do not attempt to neutralize a chemical spill on your skin. There are also two safety stations. There's a shower, an eye wash, and a fire extinguisher. If you get chemicals in your eye, ask somebody nearby to escort you to the eyewash station. You should do this for 15 minutes. 
make sure to keep your eyes open. If you spill a large amount of chemicals on yourself, pull on the shower. You'll probably never have to deal with fire in the lab, but just in case, here's what you do. Don't panic. Most lab fires can just be smothered. If the fire is too big to smother, get your instructor and they can use the fire extinguisher. If there is a serious fire, your job is to leave the lab. The same is true if an alarm sounds. Your TA will be your guide. In the event of an alarm, leave the room, head to the nearest stairwell, go down to the ground, and head for the mall. Don't stop until you get to the mall. Once on the mall, look for your TA. If access to the mall is blocked, head for the Science Library parking lot. Back to the built-in safety equipment. There are two types of hoods in the lab. These hoods are designed for more dangerous reactions and chemicals and will change the air in the room as many as six times per hour. Their purpose is not only to remove fumes, but also to contain spills which may occur. There are also these downdraft hoods on each bench. When you're working with something that gives off a small amount of fumes, you can put your beaker at the back of the bench and the hood will take care of the fumes. We will also use one of the hoods to contain waste. Part of being in a chemical laboratory is learning how to dispose of chemicals properly. Although most of the experiments you do do not use environmentally hazardous chemicals, some of these chemicals can react with things that are already in the water, so don't pour anything down the drain except for pure water. There are five basic kinds of waste that we generate. Solid chemical, liquid chemical, glass, trash, and pure water. Each has its own specific disposal requirements. Solid chemical waste is disposed of in a crock in the hood. This includes any solid chemical which is left over. Paper towels which have been used to dry glassware or wipe up your bench are not considered solid waste. Excess solid unknowns are considered solid waste. The next type of chemical waste is liquid waste. Each week, the prep room puts out a new liquid waste bucket labeled with the experiment which is being performed that week. All of your excess solutions, washings, and liquid products should go into this bucket. The third type of waste is glass waste. We separate the glass waste from the solid waste and from the garbage, mostly for safety reasons. It's important to note that glass waste with chemicals on it is still glass waste and not chemical waste. This includes things like capillary tubes and micropipettes. The garbage can is for household type garbage, such as drink containers, notebook paper, and paper towels. Again, remember that paper towels which have been used to dry glassware or wipe up your bench are not considered solid waste. And finally, don't forget, the sink is used only for pure water. This is the reagent bench. A variety of things are stored here, scissors, tape, parafilm, and some chemicals. Some chemicals, based on their danger level, are stored in the fume hoods, especially acids and bases. Notice that everything is labeled. It's important to label bottles and beakers containing chemicals because many look the same. Whenever you need a particular chemical, make sure you bring your own container to the reagent bench. It's important that these stock solutions stay uncontaminated for other people in your class. Let me show you the correct way to get some of this chemical. I'm holding the cap, not putting it down on the reagent bench so it won't get contaminated, and I'm not using my pipette directly in the bottle. Now, take this beaker back to your work area. There are a few other safety things to keep in mind. It might be obvious to you, but don't eat or drink in the lab. It's easy to be poisoned by chemicals if you swallow them. Also, make sure you clean up after yourself. Some chemicals are very dangerous to leave behind. When the water evaporates, they can become hundreds of times stronger. The last thing to think about is your relationship with your instructor. You both have responsibilities to each other. Each of you needs to give 100% when you walk in the door. Your instructor's job is to help you find your own answers to the problems presented to you in lab. Your responsibility is to be attentive, take notes, and try to find your answers. You will also exchange lab reports with your instructor. You'll write them and he or she will grade them. Your instructor should let you know when your reports are due and should describe any penalty associated with a late report. He or she is also responsible for your safety here, but you need to come to lab prepared. Read the experiment ahead of time, 
do the pre-lab preparation assignment, have the appropriate safety gear with you. If you don't come prepared, don't be surprised if your instructor asks you to leave and come back when you are prepared. So now, I guess we can talk about what happens when you miss a lab. First of all, try not to. Second of all, contact your instructor as soon as possible. If you can't get a hold of them, contact the TSO. Thirdly, making up the work. You have to do the work, even if you have an excused absence. You can get the day excused, but not the work. So talk to your instructor on due dates and other stuff. In order to help you, we have makeup labs. Here, you can make up the experiment your class did this week or last week, but that's as far back as it goes. You can find out from the TSO when these labs have been scheduled. Make sure you come really prepared to this lab because there is no pre-lab presentation. Well, that's the end to our introduction to the Department of Chemistry lab program. If you have any questions, much of this information is in your lab manual and your instructor is also a good source of information. And finally, don't forget about the people in the teaching support office. There are many people here to help you. All you need to do is ask. On behalf of the Department of Chemistry, welcome and have a safe and happy semester.